everyone, this is Erin with Five Parks Yoga. We are filming today at beautiful Lake of the Ozarks in Missouri. So I hope you enjoy this setting and the sounds of the lake and a little bit of a breeze and some bugs. Um, today's class is a traditional Hatha yoga style class and we'll be holding our postures for anywhere between three to seven or eight breaths, depending on the posture. I get a lot of requests for um, wrist-free yoga classes. So if you're needing a break on your hands and wrists for any reason, whether you have wrist issues or not, um, you might really enjoy this class. It will not include chaturangas or down dogs or anything that's weight bearing on your hands. So we will be doing a lot of standing postures and it will be a strength building class without flow. So I hope you enjoy it. We're gonna start with a spinal warm up in a seated position. So join me in a comfortable seated position, stacking your shoulders over your hips, whether or not you are cross-legged or on your shins, whatever works for you, as long as you can maintain an upright spine. Close your eyes. Let's take a couple of breaths here just to connect to our space and connect to our breath. I'm gonna guide you into Ujjayi Pranayama. Um, the victorious breath of yoga. You can practice this with me or not. So close your eyes, bring your hands to a comfortable position on your knees or your lap. Breathe in through your nose, hold it at the top for three, two, one. Release it through your mouth. Nice, long, slow exhale. Close your lips. Take a breath in through your nose, hold it for three, two, one, just as slowly release it this time through your nose. Keep your lips closed. Find a gentle constriction at the back of your throat so your breath becomes audible. Breathe in through your nose. Just as slowly exhale through your nose. Keep that constriction at the back of your throat so that you can hear your breath. Again. And begin to warm up the spine in all directions. If you can maintain ujjayi pranayama throughout your practice, I encourage you to try. This is a great practice to really tune into your breath and listen to the sound of it, because um, you can just slow your breathing down as you adjust to the posture and really tune into the sound of it. So inhale, both arms up. Exhale, we're gonna take a side bend to your left. So bring your left hand towards your mat, really lengthen up through your right side and then side bend as far as you can while maintaining contact of your sitting bones on your mat. Last breath, maybe go a little bit deeper into, into your side bend. Length throughout your spine. Switch sides. To the other side. First lengthen through your left side and then begin to side bend while maintaining contact with both sitting bones on your mat. So try to avoid this, okay? Stay long, lengthened. Listen to the sound of your breath as you hold the pose. Last breath, maybe go a little bit deeper here. Come all the way back up. Okay, let's take it into a twist. Bring your left, your right hand to your left knee. Twist to your left, shoulders stacked over your hips. Look out over your shoulder and hold it. 
listening to the sound of your breath and the boat going by in the lake. <laughs> center. That was a very loud boat. Twist in the opposite direction, keeping your shoulders stacked over your hips, looking out over your right shoulder. Back to center. Let's take a shoulder opener. Bring your hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, open your chest. Hinges fire forward as is comfortable for your hips. Start to lift your hands up off of your back. Again, as far as is comfortable. and release, come all the way back up and come into a tabletop position. With your shoulders stacked over your wrists, drop your belly down, lift your tailbone, lift the crown of your head without cranking your head back. Start to lift your chin away from your chest, but keep your neck open. Feel the stretch in the front of your body your abdominal muscles, feel the little arch in your spine. A lot of classes we don't really hold our cow pose, so enjoy this stretch as you can tune in to exactly what's happening in your body in this stretch. Then go ahead and round your spine to cat pose. This is one of my favorites. So as you lift, your shoulder blades and separate them. Bring your chin toward your chest. Again, you don't have to crank your neck, but you start to take your gaze toward your belly button. Lengthening the back of your neck. Just really notice what's happening in the back side of your body. All right, and then just one movement from cat to cow, cow to cat. Just an excellent, excellent stretch for your spine. All right, from here, go ahead and make your way to the back of your mat into a ragdoll position. So you can keep your legs bent a lot, rest your torso on your thighs, and then if you'd like to, you can either just drape your arms down so they're super heavy on your mat, or you can take opposite hand to opposite elbow. Let your head dangle. This is just a really good stretch to lengthen the back of your neck, the back of your spine. So just focus on letting your upper body be really, really heavy. It's a dangle. That's why they call this posture ragdoll. All right, and then from here, if your arms are crossed, just rest them down on the floor and start to make your way up to a standing position. I'm gonna roll my way up nice and slow, but whatever works for you. If that feels hard on your back, you can just come up to a standing position. You don't have to take it slow. All right, now bring your feet to touch, but leave a little bit of space between your heels just for your, the sake of your low back and then spread your toes nice and wide so that you can see mat between each toe. On your next breath in, lift your arms up and then as you exhale, bring your left arm forward and your right arm back. Keep your hips so that, that they're both pointing toward the front of your mat and then really use the strength of your core to twist, maybe looking back over your right thumb. One more breath. All 
return to tall mountain and switch sides. Right arm forward, left arm back, your hips squared, and then twist as deep as you can. So you should be able to feel your abdominal muscles working to initiate the twist without flinging your body. Hold it, maybe look out over your left thumb. And then bring your left arm up. Bring your hands behind your back for another chest expansion. Now this is um, optional, the chest expansion, but we're gonna take a forward fold. So this focuses on the length in your hamstring. So you can hinge from here. Again, if you don't want the chest expansion, just take your hands to the floor. This time though, we're focusing on working the legs in the direction of straight. It doesn't matter if they're straight or not, but I want you to feel a stretch in your hamstrings, the backs of your legs. All right, if you're in chest expansion, take your hands to the floor, and then all of us together are gonna come up to monkey pose. So Ardha Uttanasana, it's a halfway lift. Again, legs are in the direction of straight. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins, the floor, your toes, just as long as you can keep one straight line from the crown of your head all the way to the base of your spine. Last full breath in and out through your nose. Okay, from this halfway lift position, you're just gonna walk your hands all the way to the front of your mat. And while you're on your way, you're gonna bring your right foot forward so that you're in a low lunge position. And then come up to, into a strong low lunge position where your hands are practically hovering off of your mat. Okay, so this is automatically, instantaneously gonna activate your legs. As if your legs were touching, squeeze your inner thighs together. So imagine that they're touching. This will square your hips off, hopefully. Getting a lot of strength building in your back as your hands hover over your mat. So take one more breath here. without moving your legs. Bring your hands up overhead. So position your wrists over your shoulders and your shoulders over your hips. So really check in that you're not leaning too far forward or too far back. Once your arms are up in the air, relax your shoulders down away from your ears. Listen to the sound of your breath as you inhale. Just as slowly exhale. Two more breaths. All right, you're gonna take your left heel, lower it down, woo, I just lost my balance, down onto your mat and open your shoulders and your hips to the side. Extend your arms parallel to your mat for Virabhadrasana 2. This is warrior two posture. We're gonna hold this one a little bit longer. Check in with your alignment, peek down so that you can see your big toe, your knee tracking more toward your pinky toes. You're activating your glute and your hip. That was my second breath. We're gonna take three more. So try and make yours slow and loud.
complete this exhale. Okay, from this position, you're gonna to return to crescent lunge. So you're gonna peel that back heel up off of your mat again, lift your arms up overhead, and then you're gonna step your left foot to meet your right, reach your arms back, sit low, chair pose, with arms extended behind you. Feet can either be touching with that little space between your heels, or you can bring them to hip distance apart, your choice. Just keep your chest open. Really intensify the strength in your triceps by squeezing your shoulder blades towards one another. Hold it here. All right, from this position, you're just gonna forward fold over both of your legs. Give them a little pedal here. Keep your left foot where it is, or you can bring it a little bit further toward the front of your mat if you need to, and then step your right foot back. Okay, so strong low lunge. Make sure that your left knee is stacked directly over your left ankle and then come up practically to hover. You can use your fingertips for balance here, but no weight into your hands. Okay, so all of the strength is coming from your legs and your back, holding you here. A Couple more breaths. Again, imagine your inner thighs are touching and then squeeze them together. This will hopefully draw your left hip back and your right hip forward so that they are in one line with one another. All right, place your right heel on the floor. I'm trying to do this without losing my balance this time. Come up to warrior two. So check in with your alignment first because we're gonna settle in. I want you to hold the posture with good integrity in your body. So check down toward your left toe. Make sure you can see it. Make sure that knee isn't buckling in. Open your hips and your shoulders to the side. Maybe a little shoulder roll. <laughs> I think my problem is my mat's a little slippery here. So arms parallel to your mat. Five deep, slow Ujjayi breaths. return to crescent lunge. So just peel that right heel up off the floor, lift your arms up overhead, hold here. We didn't hold it before, so I'm gonna hold here for, for three breaths. All right, now this time, bring your hands to your heart, keep your left leg bent, step your right foot forward, sit down into your chair, keep your chest lifted, press your sternum into your thumbs and your thumbs into your sternum and hold. All right, instead of forward folding, we're gonna come up to a stand. Lift your arms up overhead. And then cactus your arms. So draw your elbows down, lift your chest, lift your chin. Hold here, opening your heart, opening your whole front side of your body. your arms up overhead. Bring your hands back to your heart. I'm gonna take your left ankle over your right knee. Come into standing pigeon pose.
All right, and from this position, you have a couple of options. Right hand to right hip, peace fingers around left big toe, or left big knee, or left knee. It's actually called big knee posture, so if you'd like to, you can extend your left leg forward, or you can hold here with your leg bent. One more breath here. Okay, and if you're in standing big knee posture, you're gonna open your left knee to the left. Okay, if you have hold of your toe, same thing, just open to the left. Both options are great. Working on your balance. Option to extend your right arm to the right. Okay, now return to mountain pose. Lift your arms up. We're not gonna hold it as long this time, but cactus your arms. Take one more breath here. Lift your arms up, hands to your heart. Standing pigeon on the other side. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. Sink down, hold it. Listen to the sound of your breath going in and out through your nose. Let the steadiness of your breath steady your mind to steady your balance. All right, either standing big, knee, big knee or standing big toe, your choice. Hold on to your knee or your big toe, left hand to left hip. Option to extend your leg or keep it bent. Open your knee or your foot to the side. Option to extend left arm to the left. And return to mountain pose. Tall mountain here. Hands back to your heart. And then let's take tree pose. So standing on your right foot, left ankle, or left foot to le right ankle, calf, or inner thigh. Choose any arm variation that feels good to you. I'm gonna face out here. Try to steady your breath so that your inhales are the same length as your exhales. release. If you want to, you can just stretch your feet, roll your ankles around a little bit. Okay, and let's balance on the other side. So right foot to left ankle, calf or inner thigh. Avoid your knee, please. Pick the arm variation that you need today. So hands at heart, really grounding. You can lift your arms up if you want to feel or um, gain energy 
you need a shoulder stretch, you can take your hands behind your back, whatever feels good. breath on this side. Release, give your feet a little wiggle if you want. And then come down to a seated position on your mat. Bend both of your legs. Place both feet flat on the floor. We're gonna hold boat pose for seven breaths. You have a couple of options here. If you want to, you can keep your feet on the floor, support yourself with your hands and start to lean back. This could feel like a great core strengthener for you today and that's great as long as you can keep your chest lifted so the pose does not look like this. Okay, option two, take your feet up off the floor holding the backs of your legs. Option three, extend your arms forward. Option four, straighten your legs. I'm not going to take that option. And we're going to hold. Last breath here. Release to butterfly pose. So bring the soles of your feet together. Draw your heels in. <clears throat> Stack your shoulders over your hips, roll your shoulders away from your ears. And then option if you'd like to, to hinge forward as long as you maintain a straight spine. folded forward, release from your fold. I'm gonna to turn to face you. Go ahead and take your left leg off to the left. Bring your right foot to your left inner thigh. We're gonna take a side bend first. So go ahead and bring your left hand to your right knee. Reach your arm up and over toward your toes. Simply take your right shoulder down and face your toes for a forward fold over your left leg. It's okay if you're upright, just start hinging forward slowly with a straight spine. and switch sides. Right leg to the right, left foot to right inner thigh. Take the side bend first, so you're gonna twist across your body. Right hand to left knee, left arm up and over. 
Get nice long length in your side. And then bring your left shoulder down and face your right toes. Forward fold, hinging from your hips over your right leg. Even if you're upright here, just start walking your hands forward and hold it. Make your way down onto your back. Again, bend your legs. I'm gonna take bridge pose. So position yourself with your heels towards your hips, your glutes, and your hands alongside your body. Lift your hips up and hold. Continue to practice your Ujjayi Pranayama. Slow, steady breaths in and out through your nose. I don't know what you think of these longer holds. I like them and I believe that they take some patience and fortitude. And the breath, the breathing practice in yoga is the avenue to create that in your practice. The steadiness, the fortitude, the patience, the will, all of those great things. And go ahead and release. We're gonna extend the left leg long and draw the right knee toward the chest. So interlace your fingers around your knee, flex all 10 toes, bring your knee, your right knee toward your right shoulder, but keep your hips and your shoulders flat on your mat. Give it a tight squeeze here. For your supine twist, relax the grip on your knee and guide your knee across your body to the left. And gaze to the right. If you prefer a different twist, feel free to take that. Release and switch sides. Extend your right leg long. Draw your left knee in, hands around your knee. Flex all 10 toes, knee, left knee toward your left shoulder. Tight, squeeze elbows in, hold. your body. Left knee to your right. Gaze to your left. back onto your back. Bring both of your knees to your chest. And 
and release. So anything else you're feeling like you want before Shavasana, go ahead and make those movements, make any adjustments, and then meet me in Shavasana, extending your legs long on your mat. Let your feet fall open, arms will rest alongside your body. Let your palms face up, your fingers be soft. Join me in a deep breath in through the nose. Hold it. Let it go through your mouth. Let your lips be soft. Come back to the natural rhythm of your breath. If you have the time today, please enjoy your Shavasana for even longer. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. Today as you go forward, may you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart. From my heart to yours, namaste.